Yet another clear winter day in Texas. Let's head right to that surface map and we can see very little in the way of weather systems. The pattern dominated by this plateau high over Utah, Idaho, 1024 millibar center in that, and that's providing a flow off the plateau regions into the lower elevations. Also, we have this outgoing polar high across the southeastern U.S., starting to get some very early return flow. You can see that that's not connected to the Gulf. So dew points with this warm front are in the 30s and 40s. Another Alberta clipper coming out of the Dakotas. You can see right there at that triple point, Bismarck at 66. Some very warm weather for this time of year. And check it out. These are the forecast high temperatures. We don't do historical highs and lows unless it's a historical situation. These are the forecast official temperatures from the Weather Service. We're expecting 67 at Glasgow, breaking the record by 5 degrees. In Helena, Montana, breaking the record by 7 degrees. That record was set in 2008. And all these red readings that you see right here, that's where temperatures are expected to break the record for the date. So that's a pretty wide swath. Even in Northern California, Ukiah, coming up to near 80 degrees, and San Jose, a toasty 75. And let's take a sneak peek for tomorrow. You don't have to wait till the end of the weather cast. We're just going to put it up right here. Very large swath across the central plains up to the high plains. Still water, almost touching 80 degrees right there, setting the record for the date, set in 1956, and lots of mid-70s throughout Kansas and Nebraska. And the temperatures are sneaking up towards the record for the date in parts of the east-central U.S., out towards the Atlantic seaboard, 62 at Atlantic City, and 72 at Charlotte. A little bit of moderation by Friday. Most of that hot weather moving into the Georgia and South Carolina region. And Saturday, indeterminate, but possibly parts of the southwestern U.S. should be on the warm side. Well, we better head straight to the upper air chart to see what's happening. This is how we understand the patterns effect in the continent. Got this zonal flow coming from the Pacific. You can see that there's not too much north and south oscillation on that. Out in the Atlantic, it's definitely a different story. Very sharp ridge across Greenland connected with this trough off the east coast. And we can also see the development of the polar vortex. That's one branch of it. It's certainly taken some definition that we did not see a couple weeks ago. And over the next week, we're going to see some increased definition of that polar vortex. Look up there in Canada. You can see that coming together by the 5th. That's a very well-established polar vortex. And one strong medium-scale trough across the northern plains. Another off the east coast. And then we have this cutoff low trying to develop and shear itself off in the Pacific north of Hawaii. Looks like that's going to get cut off, and we're just going to reestablish this progression of troughs coming in from the North Pacific. And you can see that this is kind of a northwesterly flow pattern. So that's going to bring us into cooler weather, at least for the northern U.S. A lot of that can be indeterminate for the southern U.S. And then by the 9th and 10th, that polar vortex still hanging on in the Hudson Bay region. However, we've still got a fairly strong zonal component, and that will probably keep some of that polar air from plunging southward. It's definitely going to be up there, but we just don't really have a mechanism to really bring that down. And I, I'm not going to really look at much past 250 hours because I have seen some flip-flopping with the models 
our supporters for the Monday stream. They probably remember we were seeing 1060s developing up there by mid-December. And I think uh, we're seeing some variation as far as that goes. So anything past the 5th and 10th looks like that's really not locked down at this point. There's just too many variables. So we're going to concentrate on the upcoming 10 days. So people, what are those upcoming 10 days going to look like? Well, here's where we're at right now. And you can see the thermal gradient extending from the Midwest up into southern Canada. There was some pretty heavy snow coming down in Calgary a couple hours ago. And the front's running about like this down towards the Mississippi River Valley. So let's set things into motion. What we're seeing here is those paraclinic systems moving west to east. Kind of like that right there. So the Great Lakes will be in the path along with Minnesota and Wisconsin. Here comes a weak Alberta Clipper for Friday. Most of that's heading towards Chicago, Cincinnati, Detroit. And there's that accompanying anticyclone. And then we get the return flow for the next system upstream. That's it right there on Saturday coming through Montana. So certainly some inclement weather there along the U.S.-Canada border. And that's progressing to the east. The cold blast with this over the weekend coming a little bit further south. There's that cold air advection, and some of it moving into the central Rockies. So for Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, this will have some effect. Cold front, looks like that's continuing on into Texas and the Gulf. And we get the establishment of this MCS for Sunday night. So we could see some severe weather in parts of Alabama, Mississippi. Let's see, when does that start? Sunday afternoon. So starting about Arkansas, Louisiana, and eastward overnight. So that's going to be something we're going to focus on there. Behind that, yeah, that's a good push of cold air coming south. So that will be one of our first major pattern changes. You can see the high associated with that, only 1028 millibars. That's not very strong. So that means that we're just going to kick this high out to the east, and then we're going to set up the next system upstream. And this is a little bit further south. That's a Colorado lee side low there. There's the frontal systems with that. This is for Monday. Look at all that snow there in the northern and central Rockies. Yeah, if you're Jack Nicholson, that's a good time to hunker down and start writing your novel. But that system does not hang around very long. It emerges into Kansas right there. You can see that by the lack of any precip along the dry line or the front, this is a dry system, and we've just not opened up the Gulf. And the lack of latent heat feeding into that system will dampen any deepening tendencies. And you can see already it's starting to feel there, 991, 984 by Wednesday. Actually, that's Tuesday night. But a little bit of precip developing out ahead of it. Yeah, so right there, Tuesday night, we are opening up the Gulf, and the precip really gets going. So the effects on there are mostly east of the Mississippi River. So it's basically a 1, 2, 3, 4 progression of systems from west to east, and not really a whole lot of Arctic air coming south. That brings us up to the 10th. That's probably a good place to stop. I don't really trust the output after that. But we do know that there's going to be a considerable amount of Arctic air locked up. All we need is some strong ridging on the West Coast, and that will boot that air southward. And we just don't know if that's going to happen. It may stay up there in Canada, or it may blast southward after the 8th, 9th, or 10th. That's just too far out. So let's move along. The weather in your part of the country. Everybody likes that segment, don't they? Well, let's dive in and check it out. 
some clouds coming out of Mexico. Looks like some rare southerly winds in the mid and upper troposphere. Got to scope that out and see what's going on. And we've got a broad cutoff flow off of Baja, California, bringing a southerly gradient to much of northwestern Mexico. And that can feed some moisture northward. There it is, a little plume of moisture, half an inch to an inch, precipitable water. Let's see what's going to happen with that. Doesn't move very far northward. In fact, it looks like it kind of goes over the mountains and feeds into the plume of tropical air feeding into Texas over the weekend. California and Nevada looking clear, except along the coast. The marine layer right up there along the beaches, stratus and fog lurking just offshore. And you can see the barrier effects off the islands. Little vortex going there. I don't know if that's, I don't know what the name of that island is. But anyway, that's very cool. Not much going on in the Bay Area or Northern California. In Washington, we get closer to that frontal system, which is mostly up to the north, but we do have open prevailing westerlies across Washington, and that's given us some of these transverse bands and some standing lenticular cloud forms. Look at that right there. That's around, uh, what, Yakima? Pasco in that region. So that's going to be a spectacular sunset for parts of the Columbia River Basin. Definitely some standing lenticular cloud forms in Montana and Wyoming. That's some cloud top features right there. Kind of shows you how strong that flow is. And a lot of it extending out towards Idaho. It is a warm day, as we pointed out. Temperatures coming up to near 70 in parts of western Montana. In the Dakotas, some changeable weather. We've got the cold front dropping south, the warm front heading east, and the triple point and the occluded front extending up towards Manitoba, where we've got some snow showers at this hour. Nebraska and Kansas, Denver, under downslope conditions, a little bit of standing lenticular right there around the South Park area of Colorado, and just a lot of high clouds, cirrus, and some out cumulus with some forcing in the mid-levels. Going south into Oklahoma, we get closer to that stagnating polar system. The air mass down in Texas, Louisiana, modifying. little fire right there, and I guess that's around Fort Polk. Same story across the southeastern U.S., modifying polar air. We are getting some warm air advection through that region and some associated cloud forms. That's mostly mid-level cloud. Also a warm air advection pattern in Virginia and North Carolina. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s through that region. Same thing in the Great Lakes. We are north of the warm front, warm advection pattern. Lots of flow out of the southwest just off the surface, and that's providing substantial isentropic lift through that region. And even cold air advection for the northeastern U.S. Don't often see that. Typically, it's the other way around. You've got the northwesterly flow and cold air advection. What we have here is west-southwest winds. Temperatures coming up to the 40s. 30s and 20s up there in Quebec and Vermont. And you can see that some of the ground is frozen. Some snow fields showing up there in Vermont and around Montreal. And the warm air advection pattern should provide a moderating influence. And in closing, I'll let you see the raccoon I trapped this morning. We've been having some issues with raccoons. The weather getting colder. I took him outside the city limits and let him go. But we're glad to be rid of him. I should have taken some video. I'll do that next time. A special thanks to our newest supporter, Kevin Fessler. Welcome to the show, and I appreciate your contribution. And that's all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you all 
on Friday. Have a great one. Bye-bye.